Hello, this is John with Theology Ed. This is part 26 of the iPad Go 2 Explain series. I actually just recorded a different video for part 26, and um, in the last day or two, something clicked. I, I saw something in here that I thought, this is just really important, and I want to make sure that I get this in the series first, and then I'll release the other video in which I say it's part 26. That's part 27, uh, which is a much longer video, about an hour, and over an hour, well over an hour, almost hour and 40 minutes almost. It's a uh, like a summary of the whole iPad Go 2. I actually go from beginning to end and work through it, explaining some things and drawing some more connections to where we're at in the timeline, December and what's coming. But this video here um, is exciting to me. What I'm working on this right now that you're watching because we are, this is the first, what I'll call the first major discovery, I think, what is the first major discovery uh, about IPET Goat 2 that I've made in uh, a little while since maybe last uh, spring, summer, when we were going through and really uncovering and identifying a lot of what's going on with the lemma and the applications. The lemma knew it and uh, had it and all of these uh, things that we find with the Whore of Babylon having a twofold application in the video to the United States and the Roman Catholic Church and all sorts of things. Uh, but this one, we, if you look, we're making a major contribution to understanding the timeline. Uh, the way I had been going, we'd gotten up to the June 21st, 2020 uh, annular eclipse on the solstice. And then you had the buck moon. We had the Neptune retrograde period in which we saw a whole lot of hurricanes, record setting hurricane storms. Uh, it, it was just a, uh, unusually active season. Uh, and we talked about the ace of swords, uh, representation of the possibility of going a full year without really understanding the significance of what happened ritually, uh, with the annular eclipse in the buck moon period. And in fact, that's what we're sort of seeing. We're watching things unfold and it's been chaotic and messy and sloppy and confusing, but really things are becoming clearer, uh, by the day with the uh, election tensions, which uh, with the uh, release of the vaccines, um, you know, uh, in various parts of the world, and and you know, coming to a country near you soon, right? It's, it's this is just it's it's all happening right now, and we're watching, and we're going to have a few months to see this continue before that year wraps up on July twenty in July two thousand twenty one. Uh, and I'm sure by that time, we're really going to have a much clearer picture of what's happened. Um, then we have the uh, the city calendar, which gives us up to the lunar eclipse, all the way to the, so the, the May 26th lunar eclipse, which is explicitly depicted in that calendar, all the way up to the December 3rd, 4th sol solar eclipse uh, in 2021. And then we got the tiger on the girl's jacket, which you know, it's a, maybe that's the year of the tiger. So maybe this goes into 2022. But now I know it goes all the way. Um, I'm, I'm almost positive. It goes all the way to April uh, 8th, 2024. I was already suspicious of this because we have the seven-year period between the Great American Eclipse on August 21st, 2017, which is in the classroom calendar, one understood as the year 2017. Um, which it does depict, and that eclipse is there, as well as the alignment, you know, uh, with the, the September, I think, 23rd alignment in 2017, when the girl is clothed in the sun with the moon under her feet and all that being represented here by Lily. But that marked the beginning, but we know that that eclipse intersects with this eclipse across the United States on April 8th, 2024, and the December 14th eclipse that we'll be seeing next week. Um, no, not will be seeing, depends on where you're in the world, but that will be happening next week. Uh, it's visible in Argentina, I believe. Um, that is the midpoint between them. And then we get the second three and a half years. So it seems like, well, all these things that in December 2020, you have what looks like a very eventful month or important month, significant month in this whole timeline um, with this eclipse and the electors meet uh, electoral college voting on that date. And then the grand conjunction or great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn uh, on December 21st and all of that 
you start thinking, boy, that seems important. So it seems like they're thinking of this in the seven year period uh, from this eclipse to that one and the midpoint being important. And But I didn't have complete confirmation of this and, and high degree of confidence in this yet as far as an interpretation of IPEC GOAT 2. Um, but now I do, and I'm going to show it to you how this works. All right, so IPEC GOAT 2, of course, has a classroom calendar. We've talked a lot about that. I'm not even going to review it uh, here except to say there it is. That was 2020. It gets us to December. Then we saw that Harpocrates is going to resurrect. He comes up uh, and he shows up on November 30th. This is the penumbral eclipse. You see what a penumbral eclipse looks like, the shade here, right? That's what you have. He's representing the Earth. We're coming from the perspective of the sun. And so the Earth is eclipsing the moon by casting the shadow with a penum penumbra uh, on the moon. So we have a penumbral eclipse here, uh, here as opposed to a total, which is blood red, or a partial, which uh, the I guess the umbra actually directly goes over just a part of the moon. The penumbral eclipse, you only have uh, this sort of light shading. All right, so now we have the November 30th eclipse, uh, lunar eclipse depicted, and then it goes into the uh, calendar, the city calendar. Now, um, we know the city calendar goes from December 2020 to December 2021. Now, I don't have a clue why that first slide is still showing up behind these. It really shouldn't be. Uh, maybe I can do something to get rid of that. I don't know. Well, whatever. Ignore it. It's behind it. You can't. Okay. So, um, I just hope it records correctly now. Uh, my computer's acting a bit strange. All right, so anyways, we have this being the December 3rd, 4th eclipse in 2020, right? Because we have this, we're from, we're from the perspective of the sun. This object is representing the moon. Behind it is the earth. He's been rotating. And so now from the earth's perspective, the, the moon obstructs us, the sun. And so that's a solar eclipse. And we know when he passes in front of the moon, see, here's the Earth eclipsing the moon again. In the video, that's at 5 minutes and 26 seconds exactly uh, for the entire time he's passing in front of the moon. And that is the date of a lunar eclipse in 2021. And then right on our count of 8, he goes over the number 8, which is written as a reflection in the water here. That's your month of August. So we go straight from December through May to August, to December again. We get one year from December to December 2020 to 2021. This is our 2021 calendar. This is also where the shooting here seems to be fired at, right? This, these, uh, this is the response to retaliation for whatever happened here. Uh, and it happens in 2000 and what well, the, at least the missiles are fired in the direction of 2021 in that calendar. Okay, so we go down, we see they would, those missiles be firing basically in this direction. So that's 2021 being hit. Now, <clears throat> if we, we got that right, and, oops, and we do, I'm quite confident we got 2021 here, uh, December to December, we can actually gain some really interesting information. One thing that we know is that he's representing the Earth, and we have rotation. That tells you the rotation is probably an indication of time, okay? Passing of time. But it's not days. We have a full year and he rotates precisely three times. See his left arm that direction one time. So here's the beginning. There's his first rotation four months later from December. Here's another one four months later, right before, right at the beginning of August. Okay, so this is December to like if this is just, let's say this is December 4th, right? If we're going to get to December 4th at the end, we go from December to uh, April, April 4th-ish, right? From April to right at the beginning of August, from August for uh, one more rotation, we get to uh, December. The, he has three complete rotations, one rotation, two rotations, third rotation. At the completion of the third rotation, we leave. So that would tell us that each rotation, uh, this is rotations on a vertical axis, right? So he's upright spinning 
<laughs> okay, that would tell us is a four month period of time. Now this is really interesting. It'd be even more interesting if my computer would work. Okay, let's see. Okay, so there's a one rotation is four months. Now, if one rotation is four months, we have something that is going to help us to understand not just this calendar, but immediately after we leave this calendar, we go to the dancing uh, character in what looks like the, well, I don't know where, what it exactly is, but dancing, it looks like it's in the uh, torch of the Statue of Liberty, but then uh, the landscape around it includes features from Easter Island and things, so maybe not. But the point is, wherever they're dancing, they're spinning. And we have rotation. Now, there's two types of rotation that happens in the dancing. There's very clear cases of rotation on a vertical axis. And then as they're rotating on the vertical axis going around, they also sometimes will spin horizontally, um, which are spins, but they're not actually rotations uh, like our little um, Harpocrates character spinning. Uh, so what I'm thinking and I'm going to propose this is one whole rotation on the vertical axis is a four month period of time. And I'm going to show this to you. And we have some additional confirmation that this is right. And it's really interesting. Okay. So here you look and at, immediately as he's rotating out, we come in and we see the completion of the rotation from this character, but he just, he doesn't ro he just doesn't keep spinning. He stops for a while and he does a little dance. Okay. Then we get another very clear horizontal rotation here. And I'm sorry about this background showing up. That really shouldn't be there. Um, it's it's a, due to a problem I'm having with Chrome browser. It's not actually my um, computer, I don't think. I think Chrome is giving me issues here. But um, anyways, the, uh, uh, we have a second complete rotation here. Now, if we go from this right here, which would be December uh, 4th, 2021, that's that rotation, to this rotation, four months later, there'd be April 4th. Okay, now let's go ahead and see if I can get this to work. Okay, yeah. So December 4th to April 4th. Now we're in 2022. Then we go and we get him to hang out here for a little while without rotating. And it's between April 4th and August 4th of 2022. So after the April 4th rotation, spin, we get these waves and we get the wave dance and the water dance. Okay. Now that happens between April 4th and August 4th, 2022. Then at August 4th, 2022, we get a spin. And this is when he becomes the bear. Okay, now we can, we're going to dig into this, uh, I hope, in future videos to understand more about what the bear represents, what the falcon represents, or the, uh, or, or the um, I forget the name of the, the death mask character represents, the winged one, or, you know, what these various dances can actually mean, because they'll be telling us something about four month periods of time. But here we have August 4th, and then between August 4th and December 4th, 2022, we have our bear dance. Okay, then we get two quick rotations in which the bear is going to transition into our falcon or, you know, like the plague death mask character, right? Okay. But that's going to be from the December 4th switch to four months later. The second rotation goes to two consecutive rotations on the vertical axis to April 4th, 2023, uh, this Chrome problem is actually cutting off part of the text here. That's a robot, but that's a 23 up there. Um, all right. So we have 2022 to 2023 driving me nuts. How do I get rid of this? Sorry. I'm going to go back. Okay. There it is. Okay. So anyway, so we have this. Now watch. When we go into the 2023 character, they give us a clue that I'm right or that we're right, that we're getting it. Look, 
He flashes the 23. A lot of people have been trying to figure out what the 23 is. Oh, it's 923 or it's 23, whatever. And we got this, we got to nail it. Now, the date range here is going to be from April to August 23rd, but when he's flying around. But this 23 is not the date of a month. It's the date of the year. This is our first rotation that's entirely in 2023. What they're giving us is the giveaway that we are in that year. Are we following our rotation pattern that we were given in the 2021 calendar, where rotation is a form of period that continued directly into the dancer? It went straight from the little whirling guy, uh, whirling Harpocrates, into this character who's spinning in the dancing scene. And then every rotation on the vertical uh, uh, axis um, is a four-month period of time. And if we count them, we actually land in 2023 for the first time. And then he says, whoop, he opens his wings and he says, 23, you're in the year. We have now moved to 2023 when these things will happen. Now, some people think, oh, that's the... Uh, Maybe the pandemic is deadly at this point or people start dying left and right from whatever reason because it's a death mask or maybe it's a symbol of missiles and the war really escalating a global war, the world war, whatever. I'm not sure yet. We're going to dig in, God willing, uh, to try to try to understand it better. But um, here we go. We are now in the 2023 period. That's what the 23 is. That's where we're at now. We go, and after this, we get another rotation, and the rotations get confusing at this point because he starts spinning fast, not just on the horizontal axis, but also he starts doing vertical axis. See how he leans forward and he's spinning sideways as he goes around. Um, and so it gets tricky to count, but on the uh, vertical axis, I count three more spins. There, it, it gets confusing because of all the stuff that's going on. There may be a fourth. I'm not sure. So three to four more, but I believe it's three more. So that gives us seven total spins because um, we were at four already. Now we're at seven spins. He goes through, and it's after the seventh spin that what does, what does he do? He comes out, the sun comes up, and there he is. Now look, if these are three more spins, we go from August 4th, 2023, there's that spin, to December 4th, 2023, that would be the second of those three spins, to the third of those three spins, which is April 4th, 2024, which is coincidentally four days before the April 8th, 2024 uh, eclipse that finishes the seven-year period with the intersecting total eclipses over the United States, which are divided by this December 14th eclipse. What we have then is a way to calculate not just kind of, but we can we can actually pinpoint the waves being between this four month period. We have the the death mask or the missiles or whatever, and the bear. These are all happening during very specific four month period of times or four to eight month period of times, and we can look at it and and figure out what some of this is. And in case we would have doubts about whether we're doing it right, they even give us the twenty three when we end up in two thousand and twenty three to make sure we're right on track. Uh, we know we're on track. So this is two thousand and twenty three. We're in it. It keeps going until April fourth, two thousand and twenty four, as far as the spins are concerned. So basically, it goes to April two thousand and twenty four, which is when we get the final eclipse. That's the end. And the end of the seven year period, marked by these two eclipses that intersect over the United States, is when the light comes out and we finally see the end of this uh, purpose of IPET Go Two, and he goes out. Oh, and I should say, at the seven months, just doing your date calculator from our December 4th, 2021, you add your, uh, I'm sorry, seven periods of four months, 28 months. And we do end up at the, uh, where is it? I, telling me I didn't, oh, I didn't even copy the, well, anyways, it takes you to April. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, oh, no, it's that stupid problem i'm having it's blocking the bottom i think there it is okay april so it takes us right to our april 20 2024 april 4th like i've been saying okay um man that i'm not gonna use chrome anymore okay um so we go out of this there's your intersection intersecting eclipses but now i want to get to the very end it gives us one more major confirmation look closely here at this final scene that we've 
we're familiar with and people have looked at and said, what does it all mean? We have one when he emerges. This is the first frame uh, roughly of the, uh, when we look at the sun. We have one ring, two rings, three rings visible. Then as they go out, we get a fourth ring. Then it continues to expand and we get a fifth ring. And that is the final ring we see. We get five rings. And when he came out, most of them have already passed, right? So we get our five rings. What are the rings? Now, the rings, of course, can represent eclipses. From August 21st, 2017, the first of the uh, total eclipses that's important in this time frame that marks the beginning of the seven years to the final one on 2024, uh, April 8th, that's the final intersecting one of our seven year period, we have one, two, three, four, five total eclipses, solar eclipses. We have some angulars and we have a hybrid, but we do not have totals. We have one, two, three, four, five total eclipses, including the one that's coming next week uh, as the midpoint between the first and the last one, 1,211 days separating this and 1,211 days separating that period of time, those eclipses. Okay. And so what we have here is five rings. What we are looking at in IPET Goat 2 is a period of five solar total solar eclipses, and then the very important annual, annular eclipse that happened on the June 21st date, which was related to the first 9-11, which was the last time that happened as well. And so what we're looking at is a period from August 21st, 2017 through April 8th, 2000. And 24, the midpoint being December 14th, 2020, uh, and the calendar being sort of unfolding, uh, starting with this penumbral eclipse that happened about a couple weeks ago, uh, November 30th. Then we go into the December month, which is going to mark the beginning of the city calendar, which is a 12 month period of time from December to December divided with three rotations, giving us the idea that the rotation is four months, which then we can go in directly from the whirling Harpocrates into the dancers spinning around. And he gets a spin directly, like continuing and completing that final spin of Harpocrates in December of 2021, marking the beginning of the period in that dance scene. And that dance scene period goes from, it goes a 28 month period of time, it goes from December 2000 and, and uh, 20, it goes seven cycles of four months. But yeah, so we go from that. Um, yeah, so we go from December, so we go a 28 month period from December 2021 through April 2024. And we get to see a division of that into periods of four months with different types of dances, different characters and different events being revealed or, you know, showing their plans, uh, which terminates in the sun rising and the end of their period and the Ian of Horus coming and the destruction of the Catholic church is appar apparently one of the final acts with an earthquake. Maybe that happens in 2024 in their plans. I'm not sure. And they go out and you see the five rings completed. And that's the end of your five so, uh, total solar eclipses that mark the seven year period. So what you're looking at is that. And now that will allow us, I have to use an arrow to go back to my first slide. Um, that will allow us to, when I get some time, fill in this timeline with details. Okay. We're going to actually be able to say starting in 2020, roughly, uh, when the big waves uh, seem to happen in that video. Okay. That when, if, if those waves are representing just the age of Aquarius or something, which is possible, then you may not have a big event related to it. But if those waves are representing real water events or tidal waves or, you know, tsunamis or something, now we know we, where we can put that. That's going to be in, where is he at? the waves between April and August of 2022. Okay. And that tie those waves in IPET go to that go over the United States appear to be about the time that what about the time that the Rahor Kuit figure passes from goes. You remember that when he goes to the rectangles and he's being birthed by Newit, 
And then he enters directly into the Catholic Church and breathes fire on the ovum, ovum uh, so on the egg, uh, fertilizing it as he goes into the Catholic Church, being swallowed uh, by Nuit again. Because every day in each Egyptian mythology, Nuit swallows you and then gives, swallows the sun and gives birth to it in the morning. Okay, so that's a it's like the United States swallowed him and then birthed him, knew it, birthed him, uh, and then he starts the process over again. Now that destruction of the United States, which is related to the birthing and the water breaking, it looks like that's a big tidal wave because when we see the Catholic Church destroyed in the very final scene, uh, which I don't think I have in this, so maybe I can here. I have it. I have the video. Okay. When we look here, we see that there's a tidal wave over the United States. There's the Yoni that was where he passed through when he was being birthed by Newit and going into the Catholic Church. So if that wave actually marks the destruction of the United States, for example, okay, as a tidal wave event, um, or maybe it's not a literal tidal wave. Maybe that's just the end of it, finally, uh, metaphorically a wave. But then in the dance scene, we get the waves between in 2022, between April and August. Now, if, that's, those, if those go together, then that would say that that event, that birthing, would be in <clears throat> 2022 around that time. And that would be when the attack moves primarily from the United States to maybe the Catholic Church or the church in general, Christianity in general, gets a more aggressive hit at that point. And then it goes in to the church until the end of April, roughly April 2024, at which point you get this earthquake. See, as he's being birthed again out of Newit, this time in the Catholic Church, right? We get, we go... Okay, so here we get the sun. All right, and right here you're going to see shaking, an earthquake. Boom. Okay, now the water is going to break. There's the water breaking. There's him passing out of the, uh, you know, being birthed, okay? And he goes out, and then we get the new life represented by the water lily slash lotus opening. And he goes out, and there he is looking at the sun. He finally, the passion's over, and we are in this, the passion of the of Horus or Rahor Kut. Uh, is over his thorn crown of thorns going to disappear with the destruction of the catholic church which is the after effect of that earthquake which could again be a metaphorical earthquake uh shaking of the world or whatever but you see the end of it now what you get then is a timeline again where you go from 2022 this water event to the destruction of the united states or birthing of horus or rahor could into um uh from the United States through the destruction of the United States into this next phase um, would happen in 2022, that, that period. And that would continue until 2024 when that's finally terminated and you end the five ring period. Okay. And maybe the five sharks are related to the five eclipses. I'm not sure. But either way, a lot to think about here now that we have more information. So uh, like, subscribe, share. Uh, and give feedback, comments. Of course, we're always trying to figure new things out. And anybody who's been following me for a long time knows uh, without people making good comments and contributions like they make constantly, uh, we wouldn't be near where we're at today. So thanks for the feedback and comments and keep it up and, and let's get this discussion going. All right. Take care. Blessings.